Oh, that's so freaking cool. Hello everybody, welcome back to Jason Explains Things. We're here in my dad's shop today to bring you another old Dodge project. This one I'm a little intimidated by and I have been putting off ever since I purchased this truck over three years ago. We are going to be hopefully fixing every major oil leak that this truck has. Uh, we're gonna be replacing the rear main seal. We're going to be replacing the oil pan gasket. And since we're gonna be opening up all these things, now is a great time to replace the oil pump. So my goal for this video is to give you all the information you're gonna need to do the rear main seal, to do the oil pan gasket, to do your oil pump, the whole thing. Uh, I have looked on YouTube and not found any videos about this on these trucks. So time for me to step up and do it. <laughs> my particular engine is the 360 V8, the 5.9 liter. But if you have the 318, this will also work for that engine as well. Parts for this job are pretty minimal and inexpensive. Uh, for two other supplies and tools, it's kind of a long list, so here's that list right now. Well, I have put off this job long enough. Let's get started with uh, getting the truck up on jack stands and draining the oil. Good luck, you can do it. <laughs> The next thing the book calls for in replacing all these seals is we need to remove the starter motor. I'm not 100% sure why you have to do that. I assume it's because you have to be able to turn the crankshaft and that's connected to the flywheel and the flywheel is connected to the starter. And maybe the starter doesn't let you turn it uh, freely. I, I guess that's it, that's gotta be it. Okay. All right, with those motor mounts loose, we can now uh, raise the engine. We use a hydraulic jack and raise off of the uh, vibration damper, which is kind of a surprise to me, but that is what the book says to do. Uh, my floor jack here uh, goes up to about 24, 25 inches, and I measured from the floor to the vibration damper, and we're gonna need about 28 inches. So, we have made this. Now it goes to 28 inches. It'll be fine. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna have to be... All right, hold on, move forward. More, more. There. It's nice <clears> and straight. We're clear of everything here. Okay, I everything, don't see any problems. Yeah, everything's straight. We're going up just like, you know, and see if it moves freely on you. And I'm gonna be checking around, okay, while you okay. do that. And again, we're only going up a tiny bit. Yeah, there's a gap. Yeah? Yeah, we got it. Okay. Engine is now lifted. We have a nice, good size gap on both the uh, engine mounts and it looks nice and even as well. Um, <laughs> the funny thing about this is this the, the lifting of the engine was the part that was super scary to me. I hear it. Huh? I hear it move. Yeah. Yeah, it's moving for sure. I feel a little bit silly being so nervous about this because I just didn't know what to what what to expect and it was actually a cake sandwich, <laughs> but that's okay. How much did we lift? Uh, with my Diablo um, uh, floor jack, we essentially went up and down two times to get that two inches of lift or so. So now we can start removing the bolts in the oil pan to slide it out. This oil pan sure is oil. Let 
my bolts out. You gotta go. Yeah. Feel it. Okay, it's definitely glued on there good. Okay. Oh! I got it. Yeah. And then we'll tilt up. And then we'll this goes. Okay. You go ahead and maneuver it if you need my help. Yeah. There she goes. And. No, 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 no. We can clean this off. Put a little bit of grime on there. All right, so we left the oil pan uh, soaking in some diesel overnight to make cleaning off the uh, old gasket nice and easy. So I'm gonna start with that. Remove all of the oil residue from inside the oil pan. Get the gasket material off. Get the uh, old rubber seals that were super uh, worn out off. And then we can move on to cleaning uh, the block where this uh, meets. And then after that, we'll move on to the oil pump. Bam, clean enough to eat off of. Sorta. It wasn't that bad to begin with, but it's just there were a lot of high spots and now they look pretty, yeah. All right, so that's the base of the engine. Uh, I've already removed a lot of the gasket material here on the passenger side. I still need to do the driver's side, and I also still need to remove the rear rubber seal for the oil pan. Um, to, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and remove the oil pump to get better access to all that. And she's off. All right, with the oil pump out of the way, now we remove the rear main bearing cap, which is uh, which holds on our rear seal on the oil pump, which is definitely very hard. And I imagine this is, my, maybe it's not even the rear main seal is the problem, but it might be this. this. Um, but we're gonna go and replace all of it anyway, since we're here. Um, also, one thing you gotta inspect, and if you wanna get a close up of this, Dad, is this is your drive shaft for the uh, oil pump, you wanna make sure this is not worn out. And this looks in really good shape. You see all the edges are still nice and sharp. So that's fine. That would be something you'd want to check uh, while you're here. So let's go ahead and remove these two bolts. Okay. There we go, just a little tap. And, well, hello, rear main seal. Living the dream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he actually is fun. I'm weird because this actually is like a lot of fun and having a great time. Okay, with our bearing cap removed, here you can see the rear main seal right there. Uh, we have the newer rubber neoprene style, which is superior than the older one, which is actually a rope style. To remove the, uh, now we still need to remove the upper part of the rear main seal. This is the lower part, as I said earlier. Uh, if you have the rope style one, you're going to need a tool called a Sneaky Pete. <laughs> I bought one just, I didn't know honestly what type of rear main seal I was going to have, so I bought the one needed if you were, if you had the rope type. So with, with that one, you would actually use this corkscrew right here to screw into one part of the, uh, of the seal and pull it out. Uh, but we're gonna just use a punch and needle nose pliers. So let's do that right now. The engine is now under its own weight. Oh, there it did. Just had to give it the beans, Jason. There we go. Are you recording? Yeah. There we go. She's out. Hey, really quick, want to interject uh, for one second, I'll let you guys know that uh, there's going to be a couple times coming up where I'm going to have to pause the video and say, hey, uh, what I just said is wrong because it's going to be wrong. So expect that. It's going to be only a few times but uh, all's well that ends well. Okay, we got our bearing cap here. Let's go ahead and replace our, uh, the uh, exterior seal and then the rear main seal inside. Okay, interjection number one. Uh, so I said there that now would be the time to put on that uh, rubber uh, oil pan gasket seal uh, on the outside of the bearing cap. You do not want to do that now at all. Uh, that comes a little bit later in the process after you put the bearing cap back on, after you replace the uh, rear main seal and you've put on the cork gaskets because you actually want that rubber gasket to overlap uh, the cork gasket. So uh, I figure that out later, but that's my first mistake in uh, <laughs> in doing this. So 
again, making note of, of that lip being on this side. Okay, so we're gonna put, we're gonna move our rear main seal back into place, uh, the upper part, uh, and this is the lip that's going to be facing the engine, so it goes in like so. It's getting a little harder to push in now. My plastic scraper is making this easier to move in rather than just trying to use the tip of my finger. So just with the flat edge here, again, there's no risk of scratching the uh, crankshaft doing it this way. You just push in with your finger. Ah, it's slowly going. There we go. And we just want to make sure we're flush. With, we're nice and even here. So push it right there. I think it's just the seal's getting compressed. There we go. Okay, here is our original oil pump. Um, since again, uh, it's not a very expensive part, uh, we could test to see if this one is fine and then reinstall it, but just by cleaning this screen first, but. This video skips no steps. Let's test that oil pump. All right, cool. First thing to inspect is your cover. You want to use a straight edge, like uh, like my speed square here. Use a feeler gauge uh, set to 0 0.0015 uh, inches and see if you can fit it in there. And it looks like I feel, oh, there's kind of fits right there a little bit. So this is definitely starting to get a little worn right there. So that already might be a reason to replace this. Uh, another thing we can check here is we want to get our feeler gauge to 0 0.014 uh, and see if this will slide in between the outer rotor and the body of the of the pump. It looks like it won't fit, so that is good. That means that at least this part wasn't worn out. Another test, we can go between the, uh, the two tips of the inner and outer rotor and you want to see if a uh, 0 010 will fit in there. It will not, so that's good. Okay, also another thing you can check is you can measure the thickness of each of, each of your rotors, which they're supposed to be a minimum of 0 0.0825 inches. So let's see how wide ours are. So my battery is dead on here, but if you can look right there, it's just barely over an eighth of an inch thick. So this is right, but it's looking like this is, is worn too thin. Hey, well, that was my oil pump with 130,000 miles. Um, you know, again, it wasn't, it's not too bad. It probably would have been okay. Um, some stuff passed, some stuff failed. Uh, some stuff was borderline on the uh, minimum specs and everything, but I feel pretty good again about replacing it. So anyway, let's get back to the install. Ugh. Cool. Oh, I hear it a lot. Oh, look at all that. Mm. Check it out. You got a shot of that? Yep. That all came out. Anyway, let's go ahead and screw back in our pickup tube now that it's nice and cleaned off, and we'll prime this new pump and put it back on. There we go. I think that's where it was, right? Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and prime this new pump. This is gonna be a little awkward, but you're pouring, you're pouring uh, clean motor oil down into the tube and then working the pump to prime it. I think we got it. Yep. Okay, pump is primed. We just need to put it on now with a brand new gasket into the drive shaft first and then against okay, and I'll use the holes in the gasket to help me line this up. A bit. <laughs> uh, next thing we gotta do for the oil pump, last thing is just uh, we gotta torque both these bolts to 30 foot pounds. Which is not that much. Yeah, almost there. Wow, that was really close. Wow. Good guess myself. Anyway that's that. Uh, let's raise this engine back up. We got an oil pan to install. 
All right, home stretch, everybody. Last thing we got to do is reinstall our oil pan with our new gaskets. So your new gaskets are going to look something like these. These are our cork uh, gaskets you put on the side. You actually attach these to the engine block itself. You don't want to put this on the oil pan and put it back up. You want to stick these to the engine block. To do that, you're going to need some uh, gasket adhesive. This one uh, from Permatex, this um, uh, high tack gasket gasket sealant works great for this kind of thing to nicely kind of glue those right into place. Then uh, we already have the rear uh, rubber gasket installed. We got to put the front one on. This is the new one, um, at least on my Fel Felpro. Yeah, on the Felpro one, you have the, uh, this, the, the, uh, the serial number goes on the inside. So, all right, so actually I, I had that wrong. You want the numbers of the seal to be on the outside, at least if you're using the seals I'm using. Um, the, what made that very obvious is actually the little nubs on, on either side there. Uh, only one will fit one way. So if it's not going in easy enough, swap it around. Cool. Narrator Jason is back. I'd figure I'd narrate this part to avoid any confusion. Next step is to apply the gasket sealant to the block and install the cork gaskets. To help with this, the manual recommends making four pan alignment dowels so that lining up the pan is really easy. I made some using one and a half inch long, five sixteenth inch bolts, first removing the hex head and then cutting a slot in the tip for a screwdriver. Now while installing the cork gaskets, I got confused about the blue markings. I wasn't sure which side was supposed to be facing up or down. I found the answer on Felpro's website that they are just simply direction markers so that they can be placed either up or down. On some gaskets this matters, but on these it doesn't. <laughs> but that wasn't the only thing that ended up confusing me. Long story short, in the gasket kit I bought, I had two of the same gaskets, both left or right, not right and left. This ended up not being a huge issue because I was able to install one side with the blue facing up and the other with the blue facing down. And in the end, the gaskets lined up perfectly, but I got really confused. To reiterate, be careful not to screw this part up. The ends of each gasket are slightly different, so it matters which end is facing the front of the engine or the back of the engine. Last thing to mention, the rear rubber gasket overlaps the cork slightly and the manual calls for a small bead of black RTV on these four corners. Got all that? Good. You tell me what you want me to do if there's anything you want me to do. I don't want anything yet. Okay. Okay, okay we're going to have to redo the ATV on this side because I messed it up. Okay, we're, we're good now. We're in place, but I need to fix that. Okay. I'm going to need to check the uh, the front and see if we mess that side up too. It's fine. Is it not? It's got a mound. It's got a mound? Yeah. Okay, yep. Yeah, right we, we did not mess it up on the front. Okay. I just don't want it to squeeze out into the oil pan too much. Mm -hmm. We'll line the dowels and put it in, okay? I got it. Yeah, I think our bead is okay. I see it squeezing out on both sides, so I think we did it all right. All right, we are almost there. Next, uh, grab your torque wrench, set it to 200 inch pounds or 17 foot pounds, roughly. And then we're gonna start at the four corners, alternating, just like torque, 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 and then work your way in a pattern towards the center. And then we'll check all of them to make sure they're all the same. Back on. <laughs> All right, sir. Good job. Thanks for uh, helping me out. Do it yourself. You're gonna clean up, right? Oh, I, yeah. I can leave. Okay. 
Oh, yeah. I'm gonna leave you, you please. Oh, sure. Right. No problem. No Bye. Problem. Bye. Bye. <laughs> It's been almost a month since I did the job here on the old Dodge and there have been no drips at all. No oil and that feels awesome. I mean, I, if you watch this whole video and you don't have this truck, I guess what you can take from this whole thing is even if you're doing something you've never done before, even if you're doing something that you kind of mess up on while doing the job, as long as you're patient, take your time, and do your research, you can accomplish awesome things, things you've never done before. It's, I mean, that's what my YouTube channel, frankly, is all about. I mean, I, I don't have one topic I like to do on the channel. I don't do just truck videos or, or just lawn care videos or just whatever. I, I like to do a bunch of different things and try different things because I feel like that's kind of the whole point of life frankly, is to, you know, relationships with people, but also just to not be afraid to tackle different things. Um, so that's why my channel is kind of weird, and that's why I love it, and that's why you're gonna love it too <laughs> if you subscribe and turn on notifications. That was a segue. Hashtag segue. <laughs> anyway, thank you all very much for watching. Uh, if you feel like it, you can, uh, again, subscribe and turn on notifications, or you can click on some of these videos here. They're, they're, they're awesome. This one's awesome, that one's awesome, that one's awesome. They're all awesome, and you're awesome. <laughs> so uh, until next time, don't forget to do it yourself. I'm feeling very cheesy today. It's probably because I've had lots of coffee. <laughs> all right, bye.